In a free market, drug companies would be profit maximizers. They would have contracts and they would try to sell the drug to the highest bidder. And the highest bidder would be those who thought they could generate the most benefit from the drug. It would mean that people engaged in economic activity, valuable, wealth-creating economic activity, would get the drug first. Now, not only would this be just and right, because they're paying for it, and it's the drug companies to allocate any way they want, of course, but also it would actually be most economically efficient. And most, and it would make sense most culturally. Young people don't have the option of locking themselves at home and not seeing anybody. Old people do. Because they don't have to work for a living, most of them. Because they've saved up, they're retired. They don't need to be out there engaging. And if they choose to do it, if they choose to do it, then they're taking on a risk for themselves. Young people don't have that luxury. They don't have that option of locking themselves away. They have to work for a living. They've got to live. They've got to save. They've got to take care of their kids. They've got to take care of their business that might be going under. They've got to be flying around. They've got to be taking meetings. They've got to be doing the things that they need to do in order to survive and grow and, and thrive. And therefore, they would be willing to pay more for the vaccine. They should get it first. And the consequence of that would be the economy would return to normal. Because again, remember, young people don't die from this, mostly, right? Now, if somebody had a pre-existing condition and was working and needed to go to work, they would have an even higher incentive than somebody who didn't have a pre-existing condition and therefore wasn't worried about getting the virus. So the people with pre-existing condition would pay more to get the vaccine sooner so that they could protect themselves and their families and go back to economic activity and go back to taking care of themselves and their families. Again, if you, if you just use the principle of freedom, the principle of egoism, of people taking care of themselves, of people motivated by their own self-interest, but you can even think about it this way. There's a, I found this one fascinating. There's a paper here. Now, this paper assumes the government buys all the, all the uh, vaccines, but then how should it allocate it? And it says the best way is, is that everybody bids on it, but you can bid for somebody else to get it. So, like, you can bid. You can decide I'm 20 years old, I'm, I'm young, I'm not worried about it. I'll bid for my grandmother to get it. And she can bid for herself to get it. And the people who have the most bids in their name, and, and that can come from anybody, anyway, will get the vaccine first, and you'd rank order them that way. Now, again, I don't think this is what would happen in a free market exactly like this, but it indicates a direction of how a free market would work. So, for example, he writes, a firm at the helm of a company town may subsidize the vaccination of its employees in order to accelerate herd immunity in the town and thereby avert a lockdown costly to the firm. So, you know, companies around a city, around a town, would have an incentive to vaccinate at least their employees, maybe even more than that, so that life can go back to normal. Or another one, a susceptible individual for whom the vaccine is medically contradicted, that is, he can't take the vaccine because, you know, the side effects could cause him harm may subsidize the vaccination of his doorman and housekeeper so that they can service his, help him survive his isolation because he can't take the vaccine. A health insurance company may subsidize the vaccination of the most vulnerable among the insured, elderly or bees suffering from chronic condition, in order to avoid paying their hospitalization bills. An airline, this is where I get the airline, um, airline idea, an airline or a coffee shop chain like Starbucks knows its loyal customers, its potential super spreaders, 
and may subsidize their vaccination in order to neutralize the threat they pose to other customers and with them to the business. I mean, once you let the market figure this out, once you let market forces work, once you let insurance companies, uh, drug companies, uh, corporations broadly, employers, employees, wealthy people, wealthy individuals, just, just people, work out their own incentives, work out their own risk parameters, work out how much money they will need to spend on a vaccine. I mean, amazing things happen. And you don't need this central planners in charge deciding who's vulnerable, who's essential worker, who's who's the 90-year-old to first get the vaccine. Because what you're getting right now, uh, you know, if you wanted, for example, to limit the spread of uh, coronavirus, let's say what you wanted, what you really were afraid of is overloading the hospitals, right? The hospitals overloaded. And you want to flatten the curve. Haven't we heard that one before, right? Wanted to flatten the curve. Then what would you do? Would you then vaccinate 90-year-olds first? Again, we're talking about first, right? No. Where would you do the vaccinations? If you wanted to flatten the hospital curve, if you wanted even to make sure the 90-year-olds didn't get it ultimately, who would you vaccinate first? You would vaccinate super spreaders, which means you would set up vaccination stations in bars, restaurants, airports. I don't know, wherever science is telling us that people, you know, you would vaccinate people who don't wear masks first. And in terms of risk, yeah, you might vaccinate 50 and 60-year-olds first, not 90-year-olds, 50 and 60-year-olds first. But you probably wouldn't because, again, uh, yeah, 50 and 60-year-olds are still working, they're still engaged, so there's, they would be the highest value vaccinations because they're likely to land up in a hospital if they get it, or there's a higher probability. They're likely to get it because they're still engaged in life. They're still out there, right? They're not, they can't be easily isolated. They still need to work because they haven't, they haven't retired yet. I mean, that's the ideal age group. It's not 90-year-olds. So it's, it's truly stunning that we take for granted that the government is buying the vaccine. We take the granted that the most vulnerable get it first, and that, we, and that there's silence other than, I guess, John Cochran. In terms of, no, there's a free market solution to this that's like 100 times better, except on, by, every, by every standard, except by the standard of sacrifice and altruism. And if we left it to private incentives, if we left it to private enterprise, then it would happen faster. It would happen the most efficiently. And it would happen in priority of value. So free market vaccination, spread the word, because that's what is really needed. Not 90 year olds getting vaccinated, but those who have the most to lose, those who have the, are willing to pay the most. <sighs> Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, whoever generates the most economic benefit from the vaccine would pay the most for the vaccine. Just like whoever benefits from in a shortage of gasoline, whoever benefits the most from gas would pay the most. Yep. And think about if vaccine makers makes oodles and oodles and oodles of money off of this auction, then they would have huge incentives 
to develop vaccines. If we did away with all these status laws, the restrictability of vaccine makers to make oodles and oodles and oodles of money, then we would get a lot more companies going into the vaccine business. If we, got, if we did away with all the different laws to restrict the ability to price the vaccines the way they think it should be priced, we'd get a lot more companies incentivized to go into the vaccine business. I mean, we'll see in a minute that this should never, none of this should have ever happened. Lockdowns, destruction of business, destruction of economic activity, destruction of wealth is just absurd. One of the, one of the ways to, to fix the system, even though the government is distributing, is instead of for the government to actually distribute the vaccine, imagine if the government distributed options, like, a, like a, a claim on a vaccine, so a piece of paper that says you can get a vaccine. And imagine if individuals then could sell that claim. But it's illegal today. It's illegal. If they could sell that claim, just like people hawking tickets is illegal, which is absurd, you would create a market for this, and you would again mimic, at least to some extent, what would happen in a free market. Private transactions and vaccines are banned. Literally right now, we live in a world in which vaccine producers can only sell to government. Jacob asks a good question. Should high value, high demand individuals have different prison terms? or more house arrest due to this logic or is law outside these considerations? Law is outside these considerations because law is not a voluntary, in this case, if you've committed a crime, that is, if you have violated somebody else's rights by committing fraud, stealing, you know, committing physical violence against somebody, murdering somebody, then it's not, there is no market consideration here. There's no economics to explain it. The only consideration is justice. The only consideration here is a penalty, is you suffering the consequence of your action and taking you out of society so you can't do it again and, more importantly, making you pay for what you actually did. My argument here about, about the vaccine, yes, there is an element of it's more efficient and it produces better results, but the fundamental is here, why can't, a vaccine maker who made the vaccine, who owns the vaccine, why can't they decide how to distribute the vaccine? Why can't they decide how to charge prices? This is, vaccines are purely economic phenomena. They're a purely property rights phenomena. But once you violate somebody's rights, you are not in the realm of the voluntary. You are now in the realm of government's retaliatory force. You're now in the realm of justice, which is a different realm. I mean, legal justice, a different realm from the justice of the marketplace. Those are two different ideas. I mean, they're based on the same principles, but one is voluntary, essentially voluntary, and the other one is not because you violated somebody else's rights. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. 
all it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this, uh, and and you know the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.